So why are we doing this lab? Well, let's think about this for a second. During winter in the northern hemisphere, Arctic air temperatures often dip below what we normally think of as a freezing point of water. Yet while freshwater lakes freeze, freeze over, much of the ocean stays in liquid form rather than freezing to ice. So why doesn't the ocean water freeze at the same temperature as fresh water? In this experiment, you'll use a temperature probe to measure the temperature of water as it cools and then freezes. In part one, you'll collect data as you freeze fresh water and determine its freezing temperature. In part two, you'll do the same for ocean water. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to run freezing of ocean water and fresh water simultaneously. Let's start by going over the lab equipment you're going to need for lab 10, freezing of ocean water and freezing of fresh water. So obviously you're going to need a LabQuest device. You're going to want two temperature probes plugged into that. You're going to need um, some ice. These nice little cups are in the room, in the center of the room. And you'll want a 400 milliliter beaker. You'll need a little plastic spoon. I've got uh, these in the room as well. And you'll need um, this container of salt. Share this with other people because there's only one of these. Try not to spill it. Um, so you'll need some salt as well. You'll need your iPad. And you'll also need, see if I can zoom in on this here, you'll need um, two test tubes clamped into one of these uh, structures here, kind of like this. And I'll give a closer look of that later. And just to show you where stuff is, sorry about that, the test tubes are the side of the room here. All right, so that's obvious. You can see where the test tubes are. I just want to show you this during my setup I accidentally broke a test tube and so this might happen to you so what do you do with a broken test tube on the side of my room you need to go and pick up this broken glassware box so just carefully handle any broken glassware toss it into the box I think it's sometimes easiest instead of using a broom just use a piece of paper and you can kind of sweep up that broken glassware into the box and put that back on the side of the room. Okay, so let's start the experiment setup. First thing it is, I took some masking tape and labeled it salt water and fresh water. I put the tape on the test tubes so that I know what's what. Okay, the setup should look like this where you have two clamps, each holding two test tubes, kind of hovering over a 400 milliliter beaker so that it's all set to go. To get the fresh water, go to the sink and fill it up. Fill up the test tube that says fresh water with about, I don't know, one and a half inches of fresh cold water. Dry off the test tube. Now let's get some salt water. Head on over to the fume hood in my room, find the beaker labeled salt water. I actually just took this water right out of my fish tank and add another inch and a half of salt water to the beaker. Now you're going to want to make sure that it's the same amount of liquid in each test tube. So again, should be about an inch and a half of salt water. Double check that the amounts of fresh water and salt water are the same. To your beaker, add ice, about half of a beaker full of ice. Add cold water. Okay, don't fill it up all the way. This is only up to 200 milliliters or so, so it's not a lot, uh, but certainly it's going to be plenty. It's about half full of ice water. Put the ice water underneath the test tubes, but do not uh, put the test tubes in the ice water yet. Let's set up your lab quest to collect data. Let's change the rate to 0.1 samples per second. Let's change the duration to 900 seconds. So that's going to be 15 minutes. OK. Put the temperature probe for channel 1 in the fresh water and the temperature probe for channel 2 in the salt water.
Hit play on the lab quest. Lower the test tubes carefully into the ice water so that they are as far as they can go into the ice water and not touching the bottom of the beaker too much. Okay? This is tricky. This is a very hard part of the experiment to make sure that this goes as well as it can. But again, the test tubes have to be in the ice water, obviously, for this experiment. Don't over crank on the test tubes or you'll shatter them. So now our test tubes are in the ice water. Add about three scoops of salt carefully to the ice water, not into the test tubes. Just get it in the ice water. And for the next 15 minutes, this is what has to happen. One person in your group needs to mix the salt around constantly. Another person in your group needs to just wiggle. Don't shove these things back and forth or you'll break the test tubes because it'll get cold. Just wiggle the test tubes by pulling on the cords back and forth, back and forth. And what that's, what's that going to do is that's going to stir the test tube contents. You have to do this for 10 minutes. This has to happen. And for the whole 15 minutes, you need to stir the salt. So basically, it's going to be kind of busy here doing this. It's going to be kind of funny. Try to have two people doing this. Uh, make sure your clamps are set. If things are moving around too much, you might want to fix your clamps. I was a little not enough there. So again, the most important thing is to make sure that these keep moving back and forth or you're not going to have a good freezing point curve. This has to happen for 10 minutes. If your ice water gets the ice melts too much, you can add another couple uh, cubes of ice. At 600 seconds, you can stop moving these wires back and forth. So after 10 minutes, but still continue to stir this for the remainder of the data collection period. And I'm running out of ice, and I'm going to add a little more ice and a little more salt to this to make sure it stays really cold. So I'm just going to add one more scoop of salt and just a couple more pieces of ice just because I want to make sure that this is going to get some good data so I don't have to do it again. Continue to stir constantly till the end of the data collection period. When data collection is complete, make sure to connect your iPad to the LabQuest device, and then of course, screenshot your data. To clean up, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure to just carefully raise your test tubes out of the frozen salt water bath or the ice water bath. Okay, And just resist the urge to yank the temperature probes out of there because the temperature probes are frozen solid and you're going to, you're going to damage the temperature probe or the test tube by just forcing it out of there. Just let it cool off. Go ahead, now is a great time to clean this up. This needs to be rinsed out like at least five times to get all that salt out of there. So rinse it, rinse it, rinse it really well. And when you are finally able to free your temperature probe from the test tube, please make sure to rinse it off. We don't want to get salt water on any of the electrical equipment. Make sure to, or the iPads, make sure to take the tape off your test tube, please. Don't make don't leave it so I have to do that. Um, and if you have to speed up the process, you can always warm up the, uh, the test tube under, under the, uh, the faucet. Please rinse off each test tube like you did with the beaker at least five times. Just constantly just fill it up and rinse it out and fill it up and rinse it out. And that's the only way you're going to get all the salt off of this stuff. Otherwise, my classroom and all my equipment just becomes a big salty mess and it really kind of starts getting everywhere. Go ahead and place your rinsed out test tubes in the bin at the front of my room so that those can sit and dry for the next person to use. Again, take the time to rinse out the beaker at least five times, getting it completely salt free. Then rinsing it out. Just let it dry at the front of my room. Taking a look at the data, this turned out really well. You might notice that I didn't run the experiment the full 900 seconds, but it still got what I needed. 
um, I, I basically dropped the test tubes into the ice water at this point, and so they started cooling off. At this point, then the salt was added to the water, and it started cooling them off as well, even further. Now, this is called a freezing point depression. This happens all the time when you're freezing salt water or fresh water, that the temperature for the red line is fresh water. The temperature for the blue line is the salt water or ocean water. So if you look at the fresh water line, it dipped below the actual normal freezing point, which for fresh water should be zero degrees Celsius. It got lower than that, and if I click on the screen here, it'll tell me that it got to about negative 2.3 degrees Celsius at that point. So, um, pretty cold. And then the actual freezing point, this flat line here for the red line for the fresh water, that's my freezing point. So this is what I would record in my data table. And as I click around on here, it seems to be about 0 0.1 degrees Celsius. Okay. For the blue line, that's my salt water. It also had a freezing point depression. It got really cold. It got negative 5.9 degrees Celsius. But the actual freezing point, the freezing point temperature looks to be right around here where it first leveled off and it looks to be at about negative 2.1 degrees Celsius or close to that. Okay, what happened here? At this point, I stopped basically moving the temperature probes back and forth. So at this point, the, the frozen or the freezing fresh water and the freezing salt water got to freeze completely. And as a solid, the ice for the fresh water got colder than the freezing point because it was already completely frozen. And so it got negative 8.4 degrees Celsius. The salt water had salt in it. And so what happened with that is that it had a lowering freezing point temperature over. It just kept getting colder and colder as more fresh water in the salt water froze for the blue line. The water actually became saltier and saltier. And what that did is it kept lowering the actual freezing point of the salt water. Last thing before you leave for the day, please make sure to spray off your table and wipe it off with a rag before you head out to get all that salt off your table. Thanks and have a great day.